Alright, so today we're going to go ahead and box model the mech I uh, designed in the last episode, and you can see that I've got Blender open, and I've got it set up with uh, the background image in the correct spot for each of these. And we can actually change it so that we can see through the mech, uh, through the mesh if we would like, um, but that's not important right now. So I'm not going to actually teach you how to box metal model, I'm just going to box model, uh, and you can get a feeling for how I do it, and then, you know figure out a better way to do it. Uh, there are lots of tutorials about box modeling and I'm just going to uh, show you how I do it and it's going to be in real time so this could be extremely slow. Um, so the, the mesh I've got running is a very basic cube mesh that I've cut down the middle and put a mirror mod on and that's because our mech is going to be the same on the left and on the right. So uh, I like to start at the uh, at the hips with any given mod, with any given box mod because the hips are usually the most complicated part to get right. Uh, most of the other things can be easily tweaked later, but because of the way the crotch interacts with the rest of the uh, object, uh, you can really easily screw the topology up. So I'm going to go ahead and create a kind of moderate mesh, um, not too uh, not too heavy on the details, but also not too light. And so what I did there is I just did a couple of cuts to split it into some pieces, and I'm going to go ahead and drag this over here. Now there are a lot of options as to how you handle this area on a mech. Oh, that's too far. There's a lot of options as to, as to how you handle this area on any humanoid mech or not. Um, but the thing to keep in mind uh, is that the two basic options you have are whether to come out of the side or whether to come out of the bottom. Um, because I mean, I could uh, I could go like this, and bring these over, and then I would be able to come down, as you can see. Uh, and it all depends on how much detail you need in the uh, in the crotch of your your character. Uh, in this case, I don't need very much, so I'm going to go straight down, and uh, I'll turn it invisible so we can see what's going on. And over here, you can see it's in the wrong spot, so we're going to drag it back, uh, and then we're going to scale it up. There we go. Uh, now I'm not too worried about the fact that this is still a very boxy shape. Obviously in the long run we're going to be uh, really refining it, but for now that's fine. So you can go ahead and uh, uh, take this down as far as you'd like because you're going to be filling in the details later on. So then I'm going to scale it down so it's roughly the right size and I'm going to go over here and move it so that it's in the right spot. And then I'm going to rotate it. There you go. And I'm going to go ahead and extend it. Uh, on this side for this part. Get rid of that, I don't need it. So this is actually the knee joint that I've built, uh, and we're going to go ahead and um, put some cuts in there so we have good knee. Uh, now there's a lot of uh, secrets, I guess you could say, as to how to do the knee. And one of the biggest ones is that you don't actually need, uh, you don't actually need to maintain the exact same topology in all the locations. Uh, we could, in fact, cut this and then have a high, topo a high mesh uh, density on the outer side of the knee and a low mesh density on the inside of the knee. However, because this is a mech, that shouldn't matter very much, so I'm not too worried about it. What I am worried about it uh, about is over here on our uh, uh, on our front view. You can see that our knee is drifting from where it should be. So I'm just going to grab these pieces and pull them out into the places they should be. And then I'm going to go ahead and continue. Oh, I need to... There we go. I didn't have all of the, all the pieces selected, which is why I had to do that. Alright, so now we are to the major foot region, and we're going to go ahead and extend, and then we're going to rotate, and we're going to have this rear joint be just like the knee in terms of how it's built. But you can see that we are now getting quite large on uh, on this area here, so we're going to go ahead and grab... There you go. No? Come on. It's not, uh, not obeying right now. Don't know why. We'll do it manually. Grab, grab, grab. Grab, grab, grab. And we're scale X down. There we go. go down. Go down. Oh. 
That was not quite what I had intended. Let's try that again. I mistakenly presumed I had all of those vertexes selected, and I didn't. Let's go down, go down, let me go to the front. Go forward. Let's drop this piece down. Go forward like this, and then we'll do some cuts like this. And you can see that we've got a really complicated setup here where we're going to go ahead and, and bring through a joint, but we're going to handle that later. We're going to get the basic shape down first. So up here, oh, well, you can't see the picture when I tilt. <laughs> uh, so up here you can see we've got a very severe um, uh, way that this comes in because the, uh, the hips are so oversized to absorb all of the impact of the neck. Uh, we're going to reflect that by actually pulling in these rear units. Um, I guess we should probably break in the middle there. So we're going to pull in these rear vertices, or ver verts, and um, there we go. And then we're going to go ahead and tilt them. And uh, we're going to bring in these outliers. Actually, we're going to bring in all this stuff. And these can go up. All right, so now that we've got that in place, we can continue our way up the torso. Uh, that That's too far back, like this, like this. And you can see that I'm just kind of roughly fitting the, uh, the topology at the moment. I don't need to do any of the detail work or even any of the basic work. Uh, I just need to make sure that the, the profile is roughly correct. And you can see that the profile is drifting a little bit here, where it's got uh, uh, it's got much narrower chest than uh, than you might expect. Come on. And now, normally, I wouldn't. Uh, you can use all sorts of, of of custom methods in order to handle this kind of uh, thing. For example, you can use some dragging with your with your proportional editing on, but I'm not going to do that because these basic boxes are not representative of what the final system will look like, what the final shape will look like. So it's okay if uh, if they are a little bit wonky, like you can see here. And that's going to be our shoulder. And we are actually going to come out of the side for the shoulder. But first, let's go ahead and finish off the head. So we've got something vaguely similar to a neck, which comes up. My E and my R key are a little too close together. So sometimes I rotate when I mean to extrude and vice versa. And you can see that we've got um, this system here. This line is drifting backwards. So uh, let's go ahead and move it forwards. There we go. Uh, and now the head is going to actually be really tough because of the fact that it's really awkwardly shaped. Um, but that was on purpose, so I guess I have no one to blame but myself. And that's going to need a lot of topology work later. Um, if you were building a human head, this would be the worst possible way you could imagine uh, to build it. You wouldn't, you wouldn't want to do it like this. Uh, we're not building a human head, so it's okay. Um, uh, it's okay to have a very blocky head for our mech, although obviously that's that's far too blocky. We're not going to go quite that blocky. Uh, and you can see that we all already have a little bit of a problem. Uh, our heights on our mechs are not quite the same. Oh wait, they are. Uh, they're very close to the same, but we've got this rear section which juts up on our mech here. So we're going to go ahead and drag that down. There we go. 
and that means we can drag these back there. And this goes here, and these go here, and here. And this is a little bit too much fine detail work. Uh, I'm kind of getting a little bit distracted. But if we look over here on the for on the front view, we can see that we've got excuse me, we can see that we've got some tilt to our background image, which means that our head is off center. Uh, so we're jutting off to the right here, and we're jutting off to the left here, and it is actually a little bit low. Um, so the the front view head uh, isn't very suitable for our needs, um, but it does give us an impression of the sort of shape we're going for. Um, and we're sort of keeping to it, although our neck is the wrong shape. So later on we're going to have to come back in and reshape the neck. Um, it may actually be worth doing that now, uh, because I actually want to change the fundamental topology we've got going on here. Uh, I don't want this, this structure here is bad. So let's go ahead and select these faces and delete them. And you can see that we've now got a gap and that's fine. We're going to delete this face too, and uh, this face as well. So I've cut a large hole, and you can see that what we have is an unprecedented, or uh, sorry, a, a a problem that I didn't really expect. We've actually got a face running on the inside at zero, um, and I forgot that could happen. Uh, so what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and select all of the faces in the middle. Uh, nope, that's not what I wanted. I want all these faces. There we go. Or just delete them all. Poof. Much better. Uh, so in terms of the rear, we are also going to go ahead and delete all of these faces. And what we've done is we've just cut the back of the head off. And that's because we're going to put in this massive backpack. So we don't need the back of the head. Um, so let's go ahead and put the arm in. And then we'll put the backpack in. The reason we want to do the arm first is because the shoulder is going to be a little bit touchy, and I don't want us to build the shoulder uh, only to realize that the back uh, ba the backpack isn't compatible. So we're going to take these three uh, three what am I saying three these four faces here are going to serve these four faces here no not that one in the back there we are are going to serve as our foundation. So we're going to extrude them out and then bring them in line with the arm like so. And then these two are going to be our pauldron. And you notice that I switched from doing uh, vertex editing to doing face editing. That's fine. There's no reason you have to always stay in vertex mode. So there we've got a rough pauldron going. And then these two faces are going to serve as the majority of our arm. So let's go ahead and bring that into play here. Uh, the underarm is obviously going to need a lot of work, but that's expected. Uh, with human-shaped uh, meshes, the uh, the big parts to to uh, uh, be difficult are almost entirely the joints. We, now we have to start worrying about the fact that we're not lined up with the arm. And you might think, well, that arm is obviously something we're not going to line up with. But our shoulder is obviously the wrong shape. I mean, we've got this this giant fat arm. So what we need to do is we need to switch back to vertex mode. We need to pull this stuff back into line with what we kind of expect the arm to be. Like this. And we've got, uh, on the rear side, we've also got a problem. So let's pull that forward like this. And we're aiming to have it be uh, pretty much square. So let's bring these in as well. Uh, and later on we'll add some subdivisions and cuts to make it so that it's not uh, not quite so square. But we can actually bring this up a little bit because when I said square I was lying. Um, I actually want a little bit of taper on the bottom and on the top. There we go. Alright, we've got some awkward shape here which I'm just going to fix right now so we don't have it later. Uh, in reality, we may actually want to merge these. Well, the backpack will, as I mentioned, the backpack will be the hard part. All right, so let's continue our modeling. So we're going to have a mess here. So we're going to go ahead and just 
skip over that. And then we'll continue on with the arm. And then we'll have a wrist. And then we'll also have hands, which we're not going to model right now either. Um, now, a lot of people like to actually put the rotation of their arm here. Since uh, the way I drew it, we have a hand pointing forward. I'm raising my hand like you can see it. The hand is palm frontwards. So if you hold out your arm, you can see that you got palm down or palm forward. They rotate your, uh, your forearm in different ways. So it's up to us whether we want to have that forearm rotation here or whether we want to do it later. And it's all a matter of how we want the mesh to deform. Uh, for our particular purposes, um, I'm not actually sure which would be better, but we'll go ahead and turn on proportional editing just so I can show you how it's done. Uh, if you wanted to rotate it forward, you just rotate Y as, a, as X, X 90, uh, negative 90, and that would be roughly how you'd do it. Um, obviously, you'd need to do a lot of tweaking, and uh, and you might decide that that's not that you know you only want a 45 degree rotation or whatever. Um, with a human model, that's much more important. Uh, with the mech model, we can blame any kind of rotational chaos on the fact that it's mechanical. All right, so now we've got uh, the arm, although not the hand, and we're going to go ahead and do the backpack. Um, sorry for that continuous car alarm. I'm sure you can hear it. So the backpack, uh, we're going to go ahead and extrude from the back, and um, this is going to be the part where we have to make the most crazy decisions as to exactly how we want it to be. So I'm going to go ahead and just select all of the all of the back points here, and we're going to go ahead and just merge it straight out of the primary uh, primary faces. Extrude it, I mean merge it. Um, you can see that we have a slope here that we really don't want, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to rotate... Nope, I need to turn off proportional editing. So I'm going to rotate like this, and then I'm going to scale Y0, and I'm going to rotate it back out. Perfect. Um, so we're still in face mode. Let's go ahead and change over to vertex mode and put these vertexes in roughly the right spot. And the top of the uh, backpack is what's going to give us the most trouble because that's where it has to interact with the head. That'll be where most of our uniqueness comes in our mech. Um, uh, the neck of this mech, uh, like most mechs, uh, a surprising amount of the design is found in the, uh, in the neck and in the other joints. Um, but we do have a couple of things we need to do. Uh, one is that you can see that we've got a backpack, but it's really, really narrow. Even on this front design sketch, the backpack is too narrow. So what we need to do is we need to really expand this backpack. So we're going to grab these faces. And we're going to just, uh, uh, I guess I need to do vertex, don't I? I don't know. Scale x0. What does that look like? Oh, scale x0. Let me pull this out. There we go. That's not too bad. We can repeat that process for these. Oh, I missed that one. Damn it. This is actually part of the same face, even though you can't tell. Scale X0. And then we're going to do the same for this one here. Oh, uh... The problem is that our loops are actually quite long, so if I try to highlight this using loop select, we'll actually get a lot of loops, uh, a lot of verts that we don't need. And then move this here, and, oh, that one's not too long, there we go. Alright, so now we've got the basic shape of the backpack, which is more or less what we'd like, um, but we need to go ahead and make it so that it has some definition to it. So let's go ahead and add in a little bit of topology. So here we need to extend forward, like so. Um, and we can edit these to be more in line with exactly what we want. Uh, but for now, that'll do just fine. I guess we want to bring these in a little bit. Um, and then over the shoulder, uh, this is where the backpack connects to the neck uh, and head of the mech. And so we're going to go ahead and just delete these faces. 
and uh, these faces too. And what the heck is this structure? Uh, the shoulder is already uh, interfering a little bit. It's got uh, it's got some overlap here on the shoulder. Oh, because we extend. There it is. That's where it is. All right. So we actually extended the backpack through the shoulder a little bit. Um, so we're going to actually go ahead and drag the backpack back. And up. There we are. And back. And up. And don't need you. Don't need you. There we go. So we've got free reign here uh, to fill this in however we would like, topologically speaking. Um, and what we're going to do is we're going to try and make sure that it works with the shoulder. Uh, the shoulder is going to be critical because we need to be able to lift our arms above our heads. And if the backpack looks bad when that happens, then everything looks bad. So what I've gone is I've uh, what I've done is I've raised this up so that it's above the shoulder, and I have the option of either bringing it in or narrowing it down. Let's go ahead and just narrow it down like this. There we go. And the other thing we can do is we can take this shoulder piece in the back and raise it up like so. And this piece here, we can raise this up as well. And pull it out a little bit. All right. So now we've got, yeah, that should be OK. I'll be fussing with the pauldron forever later on, so it's, that'll be fine. So we'll uh, bring these up to match. And you can see that according to our side view, we, sh we are where our, uh, our struts should be. So let's go ahead and put in our struts, which we can do. We're going to go ahead and delete these faces here. We don't need them. And uh, uh, we're going to go ahead and connect those like so. All right, and we can connect this one here. And uh, we're not going to do that, because what we actually want to do is bring it forward. You can see that we've got this L-shaped van brace coming over the shoulder. Um, and there are a couple of pieces interfering with that in our current design, so let's go ahead and delete them. Um, we want to bring this face system in as a over-the-shoulder um, object. So let's bring that forward, and then we're going to square it out. There we are. All right. And then bring it forward some more. And down and in. One more, I think. Yeah, that'll do. And then we'll cap it off. Uh, but we have a lot of internal geometry there that doesn't make too much sense. So let's go ahead and start fixing that. Bring this up. And then click, click, and then merge at first. And that'll bring it in so that's uh, an even system. Uh, We've got a lot of options as to how to fill this in. Now, a lot of people will tell you to avoid quads, I mean, to avoid uh, tries and, and stick with quads. And that's good advice, um, but uh, I'm not sure that I can follow it uh, simply because there's so many pieces here. Uh, let's go ahead and um, we're trying to go down. So if we go here, 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 and here, fill that in, and then go here, here. All right, so we take this down. I just extended a single vertex so that we could get. Um, that's fine. That is a triangle, but I don't care that much. We do want to make sure that the triangle is pointed in the right direction, though. 
Come on. When I'm recording, my mouse is a little bit flaky. Yes, camera, I understand that you want to exist. It looks like we're probably better off if we hide some of these vertexes. There we are. Um, I don't need you guys at the front, either. Alright, so let's go ahead and take a look inside of our mech. That triangle face uh, doesn't appear to exist. I must have specified this instead. Oops. Um, face. Yeah, there we go. And then we do... Face. And this guy's just kind of hanging out. So let's pull him back and make him part of this face. Oh, you can see that we have a little bit of uh, an argument w between the meshes down here. Now, when you're animating, it's pretty... Uh, occasionally you will have your mesh uh, pass through your mesh as you're, as you're moving it, and that's okay in general. Uh, if, it's, if it's not something the player will notice, it'll work out. Um, but you don't want to start off with that kind of lazy design. Alright, and then now we need to connect this to this and this and this connected. Alright, so now we've finished connecting that and now we need to take this and connect it up to the face like this and here. Yeah, that'll do. And then we want this guy here. Here. That'll do. And now we bring back our head and we see that we've only got one little gap left, and it happens to be a quad. Alright. So I'm not saying that topology is particularly good. I think I screwed up our... Yeah, I screwed up our mesh a little bit with in terms of loop cuts, but that's okay. So there you go. That is how you can quickly box model a mech, or any other humanoid figure. Um, we haven't done the hands and uh, we haven't done some of the more complicated stuff. Before we finish, let's go ahead and put the leg in correctly. Um, as you might recall, the leg has an unusual uh, design where it actually punches through the center here. So what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and delete these center vertexes. Um, yeah, just those. And then we're going to put these side vertexes in as a more complicated situation. Um, where does that lead us? Okay, that actually passes over everything. I don't want to put that in yet. Uh, in order to do this properly, we're going to go ahead and do some knife cuts, which just run from the center point down to here. And another one from the center point down to... You actually, you just need one. Uh, and then in the back. Come on. There you go. A knife from center point to here. There you go. Ah, perfect. And then we can pull the uh, original points to the other side. And we can delete these two lines. And you can see that what we've got going is we've starting, we're starting to uh, 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 we're starting to put forward some struts, so let's go ahead and extend inward here. Uh, I think that, that isn't quite what I wanted to do. Excuse me. There we are. Um, so all of those faces are incorrect. Let's go ahead and just delete them all. By alt-clicking and alt-shift-clicking. Um, but we don't want to delete the vertexes. That'll do. And then we can connect up the faces correctly. So click, click, face, click, click, face, click, click, no. Nope. Click face, click, click face, and click. But our foot, you might remember, doesn't actually have those breaks. 
um, we're actually going to want to do something pretty complicated with our feet. So what we're going to do is we're actually going to run some loop cuts just around the foot. And you can see how that's disconnected from the rest of the body so we don't have to worry about the loop cuts running all the way up the leg. But with that in place, we can connect these up. Come on. And we can also uh, polish the insides off. And now we need to run a, uh, a strut through. So we need to build the strut, which is going to come out of this part here, as you can see. Uh, so let's go ahead and do some face grabbing uh, here. Extend it down. And then over here, we're going to rotate it so that it's in the correct alignment. Scale it down. And later on, we will be refining that considerably. Um, but you can see it's still much too wide in terms of x-axis, so scale on the x-axis. There we go. And then we're going to extend. Perfect. All right, now we're going to need to merge up here. And you can see that we happen to have just the right spot to merge into. So now that we've deleted those faces, we can just merge these together. Let's start with the back and then the sides. And then the front. There we go. All right, so this is what our mech looks like at the moment. Um, it's just a real quick box modeling, and we need to do a lot of refinement, uh, and we haven't built any hands yet. But for one episode, I think that's enough. Um, I'm not entirely sure how I'll do these episodes. I'm not, I'm not confident that I like the idea of them um, being in the main uh, Minecraft-like uh, tutorial system, because this isn't really a tutorial for anything Minecraft-like, even though I'll need it for my Minecraft-like game. Um, well, whatever. For now, I'll upload it, and I'll worry about it later. Uh, and I hope you liked how I did this, and uh, learned a little bit about how I did this. Uh, if, you're, if you're inexperienced, hopefully you learned a little bit about how box modeling can be more flexible than you might think. And if you're experienced, hopefully you got a good laugh. Alright, thank you.